Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to search for Chomets tonight. It's uh, it's coming. Pesach is almost here. So then we're going to have Shabbos. We're going to eat the, a little bit of challah, and and then uh, and then it's it's Erev Pesach already, and we got to do all kinds of other things. Flush some bread down the toilet, and then what? And then we're. Uh, and then we are uh, gonna have the seder, and we gotta actually we're obligated to enter into another world, another dimension. Haris atzmai, liris atzmai kilo liyatzim mitzrayim. Chai of adam liris atzmai kilo liyatzim mitzrayim. A person is obligated to see himself as if he left Egypt. It's not a game. He has to enter into a another world, another dimension. He has to meditate and do have a sort of out-of-body experience where he travels through time and space and actually sees himself leaving Egypt. That's what we have to be involved with. It's a powerful thing. we got to take some time to close our eyes and picture this, meditate on this. It's not a joke. It's an obligation. And with all that being said, we've got a lot of other things to talk about when it comes to Pesach that are not as important. The important thing is the freedom. The important thing is to actually leave Egypt again. To see yourself like you're leaving Egypt. I don't know why my, I can't talk as loud as I usually can. Uh, but more than that, we have to Like literally enter into a meditative state where we leave Egypt. That's what we have to do. But like I said, there are less important things that we like to talk about, study, and be involved with when it comes to Passover. And one of the fascinating things about Passover, perhaps more than anything else, in the Jewish tradition is tradition, tradition. It's a holiday where there are so many traditions that are so diverse. And I think what we have to figure out is something very interesting about Passover is to distinguish between what is law and what is custom and what is practice. There are local, perhaps temporary practices. That exist in different communities and so forth. And a lot of these practices, you know, they, they stick, you know, and I observe a lot of these and I'm starting to be a little bit more open-minded about maybe abandoning some of these things. There's one major thing that this year I'm doing different than I never did before. I don't want to talk about it because people are going to be maybe shocked, but it's not really so shocking, although I mentioned it before as far as Passover. But beyond that, We have to figure out, you know, this is a time when there's always these discussions about these questions, and I know different rabbis have different approaches to these things. So, you know, there is the approach of we don't change anything, right? To the point where, like, certain communities don't even eat fish on Passover because, you know, and, uh, or they only eat fish that they raised in their own house, prepared in their own house, so they know that the fish weren't eating comets, you know. And then you have people who pretty much will eat anything other than the five grains, and everything else is fine. 
I'm talking about sincere Orthodox Jews, pious Orthodox Jews, and you have everything in between, you know. I mean, other examples of things that certain communities, they don't eat, like I said, the fish, garlic. You know, in the Sama Rebbe, he didn't eat garlic on Pesach, and he said there's no reason not to eat garlic on Pesach. But we don't do it, we don't do it, you know. And you know, all these different issues when it comes to Pesach about how how to approach it. And the, the fascinating thing is both of these approaches want to could be con, could be described with a little C as conservative. Right? Because the ones who keep all of the customs that developed over the years, they aren't even really customs. They're, like I said, they're cultural practices, I think would be the, the best term to use, rather than custom. Meaning custom means something that's pretty much a law. It's just that it's, it's not something that was legislated or... Meaning you have biblical law, you have rabbinical law, and then you have custom. And so, like, an, one of the few examples of, like, a universal custom I can think of is the, uh, is, is Hoshana Rabbah and taking the, beating the willows on the ground. A minic nevium, right? And other than that, all these other things, not eating, not eating, uh, Kitneos, not eating gabrats, etc., etc., are not customs. They're not minhogim, they're hanhogos. They are practices, cultural practices that are, and perhaps there's the heroes. They're being careful, trying to go above and beyond to avoid violating the law. But there, it's not an issue of, and, and you could say it's a devotion to God, but it's not an issue of a requirement or anything, you know. And I do these things. I, I don't eat gebrachts. I don't eat kidneyos. And I don't plan to change my approach to those things. Uh, you know, I eat only handmade matzah, etc., etc. But I also wear Shrimal on Shabbos. I don't think it's a halach you have to wear Shrimal on Shabbos. I wear white socks and knickers, you know, when I go to when I go out of my house on Shabbos, you know. Usually. I do have one pair of pants I wear for Shabbos and Yantav that they are uh, what do you call it? They're the same Pepe de Hoisen, the rabbit ship Pepe de Hoisen, but they're long pants and I usually wear those at home just because find a little bit uncomfortable, to be honest, wearing the, the white socks. But I think it looks nice. And it's the covered Shabbos. And why not? You know, why, well, you know. But I don't believe it's a halacha that you have to do this. I don't believe it's even a minhag. It's a, it's similar to how, you know, you, in, in, uh, in, in other religions they have garb that their clergy might wear. It's kind of how I see it, you know. Wearing, uh, you know, tzitzis, uh, wearing a long coat, right, that's already maybe it's sneers, you know, there might be some more significance to that. But we have to recognize the difference between, you know, what what is an obligation and what's not. And a lot of the people who oppose these types of things want to get back to the original way but they're not saying to go and wear biblical robes and things either we could dress in modern dress uh, but
you know, we, we just have to follow the, the laws, right? And the, and the old customs, and that's it. So how do we balance these two? You know, it's similar to how, like, the Muslims have the Salafi who want to go back to the original way and remove any cultural baggage that came later, but they have certain other things that they are careful about, like the length of their of their pant legs and things like that, right? And you know, these types of questions are worthwhile to discuss. So, I really haven't said anything. I'm, I'll be honest, I'm suffering from a bout with gout. <laughs> and I think my theory is, is that it's a reaction to the COVID-19 vaccine that I received. And I know that um, that's related and, and there have been a lot of people who are suffering from gout since they got the vaccine. Uh, so it, it, but it's kind of addling my brain a little bit. You know, the Baal Shem Tov says that you have to um, You have to be physically healthy to be spiritually healthy. So I, I recognize that I've been affected cognitively by this gout, but it's it's okay. It's not a big deal. So I had something to say, but I don't really know what it was. I kind of feel like the Ravakoilo. Like when he got up and he's like, the Rambam zukt, the Rambam zukt, and like he, he couldn't remember. And he had this whole speech prepared and he forgot it. And it's a Musser lesson, you know. And uh, hopefully, this video is a Musser lesson. You know, we got to focus on what's really important. Yes. Uh, and we shouldn't be fighting one way or the other. If you enjoy, if that gives you simchas yantiv, which it does for me, I'll be honest, I have enjoyment from all the potato starch foods, and I really, I, I grew up, we ate the broths and machine matzah, and I'll be honest, I much prefer the potato starch cookies to the depends on how fresh they are and everything else. I, you know, I get a kick out of saying shahako and everything, you know, and I, I kind of like it better than, than the Manashevitz stuff that's, that's, that's Gibrox, you know. Uh, that's just me. If someone else, you know, is polishing for kidneys, I'll be the first to tell you, you're 100% allowed to eat this. There, there's absolutely no reason not to. You know, especially, like, you, you have this phenomenon of people who are intermarried. They don't keep Shabbos. They don't keep kosher. But, like, they have to have, like, the Coca-Cola with the yellow with the yellow top. When when even most of the Ashkenazi postgim, except for the Hasidic postgim, say that that uh, it's fine to have kidneyos derivatives, just not the kidneyos itself. Uh, you know, and the Chayotim says you can make you can make flat kidneyos. You just you know you can make something in the shape of a matzah, a cracker, out of corn or rice or whatever else. You can eat corn chips, tortillas from corn tortillas. There's no if they're, if they're gluten free, you can eat it. You know, 
both for Ashkenazim and Sephardim. There's no reason not to eat it. Yet, um, we don't eat it, right? We're more strict about kidneyos than we are about actual chametz. It's ridiculous. But it's it's a cultural thing, like wearing a strimal. And if that gives you oinig yantiv, it's fine. Like, I enjoy that. I, I enjoy the Pesach foods. I enjoy, you know, the only thing I hate about Pesach is the cleaning before Pesach. But once you're in Pesach, I love it. And I love all this, the stringencies and everything. But a lot of people, it's very painful. And there's no reason to cause anybody pain on Yantiv with these stringencies that that have no basis. There's no reason, you know, to avoid, certainly, there's no reason for a non-Hasidic Ashkenazi Jew to avoid, and Hasidic I mean that you choose to be Hasidic, I don't mean that just you're raised like that and, you know, you leave if you left that culture you made a choice not to be Hasidish anymore and there's no obligation to go above and beyond the letter of the law. You know, and, and there's no and it's not a father to son thing. You know, the Chavasyor brings it down that if somebody, you know, if somebody, you know, Davin Svasikin every morning, goes to the mikveh every day and does all of these things that they're not obligated to do. And the same thing with all these other things, you know, kidneyos and whatever else, or the the gabrox and whatever else. You do these things. There's no. There's no. Um, there's no obligation for someone's son to do what his father did. You know, the only obligation the son has is not to eat chametz. You know. Because that every Jew has to do. So, whatever it is. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. Let's see if the mikvah is open before. Alright, God bless. See you later.